everyone, welcome back to Litigation Help. My name is Heather Huilatun. Today, we're starting a very special video series. I'm very fortunate that a deputy judge has agreed to speak with me on this channel. I remember that when I was a litigant, um, I was very curious to find out how judges think. There are some good books on the topic, to be sure, and uh, I'm going to provide these titles in the description below. But what better than to speak to, actually speak to a real judge? So that's exactly what we have today. Joining me here uh, is the Honorable Deputy Judge Janice Krieger. Justice Krieger practiced as a lawyer from 1985 to 2015. She was a bencher at the Law Society of Ontario from 2015 to 2019. Justice Krieger is currently the president of the Ontario Deputy Judges Association and she has been a deputy judge at the Hamilton Small Claims Court for 24 years. Welcome, Justice Krieger. Thank you, thank you for having me. Um, could you just describe for us just roughly um, in a few minutes, uh, the overall sort of procedure, like what happens at a small claims trial? All right, well, if you're going to trial, hmm. you're going to see somebody who looks like me the way I'm dressed now, um, even if your trial is remote in the time of COVID. And what happens at a trial is that you are essentially having sort of a stylized dispute with the other party. And by stylized, I mean that the form of the dispute is very uh, rigid. There are certain things that are done. So, for example, if you are um, arguing with your spouse, you might talk over each other. But you don't do that here, right? So what you do is you come in and each side takes their turn and the judge somebody like me guides you along to say it's your turn to do this now you know could you open for me please so you will open your case when the judge asks you to and the other side will also have a chance to open right to tell the judge why they're there so after that each side presents its case and they do that in turn too the plaintiff, the person who is actually suing, uh, gets to stand up and present their case. They tell the court what happened. And from, from the witness stand, usually, uh, they tell the court what happened. And they show any documents that they want to show the judge. And they make sure that those get into what's called the record. They're marked as exhibits, right? As the plaintiff testifies, the defendant the person who is being sued gets to write down questions they want to ask the plaintiff, the person who is suing, about their evidence. And as soon as the person suing is done telling their story, the person who is being sued gets to ask them questions. This all turns back the other way when the defendant tells the defendant's side of the story, right? And then the plaintiff gets to ask questions of the defendant about the defendant's evidence. So in this way, what gets into the judge's uh, notes into the record of the trial is a series of events or a series of tales that the parties tell and that are tested, all right, that series of events is tested by the other side asking questions about them, right? At the end of all that, everybody gets to close. And again, the judge will say, could you close for me, please? Right? Mm -hmm. And you get to tell the judge why the evidence, your evidence, is better than the other side's and why it means you should win. And that's essentially it. So am I correct in, um... It sounds like this is a little bit more user friendly than a regular trial at the regular court at the Ontario Superior Court. Am I correct? You are correct. In our court, um, it's, it's a little bit special in the sense that we have a lot of self-represented litigants. Right. Now, the Court of Appeal for Ontario mm -hmm. has told us that we are to assist self-represented litigants almost as much as we can. We can't do the case for them because we're the judge, we can only judge. But we can tell them what to do next. We can tell them how to introduce a document, for example, 
or you know do you have a document that you want to show me about that you're allowed to ask that kind of question that's true that wouldn't happen where um, there are two lawyers and even in small claims if there are two lawyers i leave the case up to them they know what they're doing they've been there before they can tell me their story they know what story they're there to tell so uh, in a self-represented litigant probably is and would feel safer, I suppose, um, doing a case at small claims because they could rely on somewhat on the judge yeah. to help them out a little bit. Well, I think every judge has the obligation to help self-represented litigants, no matter which court you're in. Mm -hmm. It's just that at small claims, we are more used to doing it. Right. Right. We do it more often. Now, um, we're recording this video today and during COVID. Can you tell us a little bit about what's happening? Are all the uh, hearings now, have they gone remote? Is that what's happening? Well, the, the Small Claims Court Working Group has been working very hard to get various proceedings up and running. So since last March 16th, Small Claims has been suspended. Uh, but we're working hard to get everything up and running. I'm taking part in that uh, in my capacity as president of the Deputy Judges Association. So uh, basically everything is running at the moment remotely, but you can request a settlement conference, you can request an assessment hearing, you can uh, request a motion, um, you can ask to get a consent order, there are all kinds of things you can consent. And I think there is a link. If you Google Small Claims Court Ontario mm -hmm. COVID, right, that phrase, what you'll come across is a rather intimidating looking document that's called a consolidated notice <laughs> about uh, proceedings, right? But at the bottom of that, at the bottom of that page, there, there's a lot of, there are a lot of useful links that you can click on. For example, there's a link for Pro Bono Ontario. So you can click on that, find out how to phone Pro Bono and get information that you need to find out what the court's doing. Also about, I think, two thirds of the way down the page before the links, mm -hmm. there's a list of the types of things that we are doing remotely. The court is definitely open for business. You can still file your claim in paper at the counter, um, but, in these times, it might be safer and better if you can do it online, if you have that ability uh, and the equipment to do it. Oh, oh for sure, yeah. Um, just a, a bit of clarification, when you said assessment hearing, oh, what yes. is that exactly? That happens when the uh, person who sues, sues somebody for, say, money that they owe, and the person doesn't defend the claim so that all that's there is the plaintiff's side of the story, right. saying so-and-so owes me this, this amount of money. Um, after a certain period of time, I think it's probably about three weeks, the court will say to you, uh, you can have an assessment hearing because there's no defense, right? Oh. Or you will say to the court, it's been three weeks since I gave this person my claim, since I told them they owed me money and demanded they pay it, um, and they haven't done anything. Can I have an assessment hearing, please? And all it means is what the judge does is simply assess the damage instead of figuring out who owes what to whom, because the defendant has essentially admitted that the defendant owes the money by not responding, right? Oh, so yeah, that's what we call default hearing over at the regular court. That's what yep. you're talking about. Oh. Yep. Yep. To get your yeah. default judgment, exactly. Yeah, to get a default yeah. judgment. Yeah.